So we've got Joe in here, he's going to be disinfecting. So you can see that he's spraying. He's going to be uh, cognitive of the electronic equipment that's inside there, but he's really just misting down, giving everything a nice, even coat of spray. And uh, it's just going to, like I said, avoid the radio. Uh, and that, we're going to hand wipe that down. But you'll see we also have a uh, separation between the front and the back of the truck um, so that the cab is a separate disinfection. And we'll talk about that in a second. So Joe gets done spraying, so he's finished now. He's got everything coated the way he wants, so he's going to do the floor last. Um, so he's done. He's going to step out. So now what we're going to do is he's going to wait for five minutes. He's got everything, and you can see that everything's just moist in there. It's like a, like a dew, almost. And he's going to let her set for five minutes. Now, because he doesn't know how long he's going to be, the next process that he's going to go through is going to be the equipment. And we'll talk a little bit about the cot in a second, but he's going to let this set for five minutes. You can see it's wet, but it's got good coverage. That's what the old, that's what the, the power painter is going to do for you, whether or not, you know, this is a cheap way to do it, but it is a way to do it. You can always go back and try to do that, but in order to get that kind of coverage that fast with something like this would take quite a bit longer. Not to mention, would you do a really as good a job? And the answer is no. So after five minutes, he's going to go in, we're just going to start wiping her down. So that's going to be the next process that he does, is go in and start to wipe it down. And we're going to, for practical purposes, say that we've waited our five minutes. And then he's going to go back in and just start from the front and work his way back. And then he'll catch the floor. The last thing he does is the floor. All right, so one of the things uh, we got done with that, and it's nice and clean, nice and shiny, and disinfected in the cab, or excuse me, in the patient compartment. One of the things that uh, is oftentimes, you know, put together and, and put back very quickly, and that's in the hospital systems, is our cot. And um, both in Bismarck Mandan, both facilities uh, have some disinfectant for us, um, so we can uh, pour it on, squirt it into the bottle, pour it on the cloth. But again, you need your goggles and your mask to wipe down our stuff. But you know, af <clears throat> afterwards, and you want to do a real good cleaning on your cot, you can take your um, Clorox 360 machine or your Wagner or your Protectus uh, product, and we're going to need a good coating on this cot because they get often they're drug into the home, they're drug around, and, and they are actually um, exposed as much as we are. So we really want to take a good close look at our cot and say, all right, what are some of the things that we really want to look at? But one of the things that is often missed is our oxygen bottle. We won't go into some of the details, but typically oxygen bottles are the last thing wiped off. Um, and they're the first thing slid right up against the patient. They are come in close contact with our patient routinely. And it's very important that we do a good job of taking our regulators off, wiping our bottles down, and making sure that our oxygen tank is clean. Um, it sure carries a lot of bugs, and in fact, uh, there was a study done recently, and uh, those oxygen bottles are, are probably one of the dirtier things that we find in our ambulances next to the floor. So uh, <clears throat> the cot itself, we do the same thing. We take our 360 machine, we spray it down, um, soak it, especially you think about our cloth. These are these, these buckets here, while they might be a, of a man-made nylon or something, they still have, they're still porous, and they're going to have uh, bugs in them, so we're going to spray and we're going to wet them down. So go ahead and take the 360 and just give it a good shot. It's on the other side. Oh. And uh, he's always got the backup. He's got that hand spray because he's, he's used to that. But uh, we're going to quickly uh, just give it a good spray down. You hold it through the ball. He's going to pay careful attention to making sure the straps get a little bit of moisture on them. There you go. And then and the handle areas, the places where you touch the most. You want to be a little, again, careful of the batteries and your electronic controls. You want to take and wipe those down by hand. But, okay. So um, now he's just going to let her set for five minutes and do it again. Another area inside the uh, box of the truck that we want to make sure that we pay it close attention to is depending on what manufacturer you have, um, there's little holes in the, uh, in the um, slides that cover our, our shelves. Well, if we don't, if those slides are open, we're obviously going to allow 
product or and or in, infectious uh, disease to get inside those shelves. So we got maybe you want to cover those shelves, those little holes in your uh, sliders up. But uh, these have the uh, outside metal slides, and those work just great. Just some little things that we want to think about. But what about the front of the cab? As we look at what's going on inside the front of the cab, and again, uh, with that divider that we have, what did you touch? What do you touch? Well, on the way to the call, obviously you're using all your, M you're, you're using your computer, whether or not you've got computer dispatch, whether you have a CAD system, you're gonna use the radio, obviously, right? So what do you do when you leave the patient, uh, the residence, or you're going back to the hospital? Well, you got from the front of the cot, or excuse me, from the, you get out from the back taking care of the patient, guess what? You need to disinfect, clean off, and, and decon yourself quickly to get back into the truck. And what do you do? Well, because it's a quick decon, you jump in the truck, you use the radio, you use the CAD, you use the steering wheel, the blinkers, I hope. Um, we, you know, we touch stuff. So when you're done with the call, it's very important that you get up front and you take your, and this is where you have your towel and your squirt bottle. You don't use the 360 machine up there. You take and you're going to have to wipe all those things down. It's important that you catch the things that you might have touched. Okay? So whether it's the blinker, the radio, the dash, the armrest, okay, all important things. Another part to keep the front of that uh, box, of, excuse me, the cab of the truck clean is we're not going to transport passengers anymore. One of the things that we have done is unless there's a special circumstance or uh, something for security reasons, we will not transport family in the front of the cab. If we, we just don't. We just absolutely don't. Now, if special circumstance occur, I would recommend that you put a mask and gloves on that uh, passenger and put them in the front of the truck. And then again, you have to always think what did they touch when they were in the front of the cab. And so get those, get that part in your brain as well. So what do we got to really decon? We got to decon the cab. So the handles, the blinkers, the mirror, the steering wheel, the splinker, the blinkers, it goes on and on and on. Think about those things as you decon. If you don't have a divider between the box, the patient care department, and the uh, cab, you need to get one. You need to figure something out. Um, on some of our trucks, we've had to uh, make shifts and things until we can make something a little more permanent. Uh, you know, plastic, whatever you need to do, get it lined. Uh, you, you really need to get that compartment so that you can keep that cab as sterile as possible from the patient compartment.